Padre Pio, also known as Saint Pio of Pietrelcina, was an Italian Catholic priest and mystic who lived from 1887 to 1968. He is known for his deep devotion to God, his piety, and his supernatural gifts, including stigmata, the ability to read souls, and the gift of bilocation. Padre Pio was born Francesco Forgione in the small town of Pietrelcina, Italy. As a child, he was deeply religious and often experienced visions of Jesus and the Virgin Mary. At the age of 15, he entered the Capuchin order and took the name Pio. He was ordained a priest in 1910. In 1918, Padre Pio received the stigmata, or wounds of Christ, on his hands, feet and side. He experienced intense pain and bleeding from these wounds for the rest of his life, but considered them a great honor and a sign of God's love. Padre Pio also had the gift of bilocation, which means he could be in two places at once. He was known to appear to people in need, both physically and spiritually, and offer them comfort and guidance. Padre Pio was also known for his ability to read souls. He could sense people's sins and offer them absolution and advice on how to live a more spiritual life. Throughout his life, Padre Pio performed many miracles, including healing the sick. He also founded the House for the Relief of Suffering, a hospital that still operates today. Padre Pio passed away in 1968 at the age of 81. He was canonized by Pope John Paul II in 2002 and is celebrated as a saint in the Catholic Church. His legacy continues to inspire people all over the world. Padre Pio was known to have had many mystical experiences and visions throughout his life. One of the most well-known visions occurred in 1918 while he was praying in his cell. According to accounts, he experienced a vision of Jesus Christ and received the stigmata or wounds of Christ in his hands, feet and side. Padre Pio also reported experiencing many other visions and mystical encounters throughout his life and was known for his gift of spiritual discernment and ability to read the hearts of others. One such vision came from Jesus himself, which would cause Padre Pio to write a letter in 1959 describing what Jesus had said to him. He said that Jesus revealed these twelve messages to him about the end of the world. The world is walking in ruins. Men have abandoned the right path to venture on roads that end in the desert of violence. If they do not drink from the source of humility, charity and love, it will be a catastrophe. Terrible things will come. I can no longer intercede for men. Divine piety is about to end. Man had been created to love life and ended up destroying life. When the world was entrusted to man, it was a garden. Man has turned it into an atmosphere full of poisons. Nothing now serves to purify the house of man. A deep work is necessary, which can only come from heaven. Prepare to live three days in total darkness. These three days are very close, and in these days they will remain as dead without eating or drinking. Then the light will return, but many will be the men who will not see it anymore. Many people will escape scared. It will run without a goal. They will say that there is salvation to the east and people will run to the east, but it will fall on a cliff. They will say that to the west there is salvation and people will run to the west, but they will fall into a furnace. The earth will tremble and the panic will be great. The earth is sick. The earthquake will be like a snake. They will feel it crawling everywhere and many stones will fall and many men will perish. You are like ants because the time will come when men will take their eyes off for a crumb of bread. Businesses will be looted. Warehouses will be taken in assault and destroyed. Poor will be one who in those dark days will be without a candle, without a jug of water, and without the necessary for three months. A land will disappear, a great land. A country will be erased forever from geographical maps, and with it history, wealth, and men will be dragged into the mud. The love of man for man has become an empty word. How can you expect Jesus to love you if you do not even love those who eat at your own table? Of the wrath of God, men of science will not be forgiven, but men of heart. I'm desperate. I do not know what to do for humanity to repent. If you continue on this path, the tremendous wrath of God will be unleashed like a tremendous thunderbolt. A meteorite will fall on the earth and everything will shine. It will be a disaster, much worse than a war. Many things will be cancelled, and this will be one of the signs. Men will live a tragic experience. 
Many will be overwhelmed by the river, many will be burned by fire, many will be buried by poisons. But I will stay close to the pure of heart. Jesus did speak about the need for humans to change their ways. In the Christian Bible, Jesus frequently preached about repentance and turning away from sin. Many people have said that some of these messages can be interpreted in different ways, but ultimately said that they can apply to various situations throughout the modern day. Interestingly, over the years there's been a variety of mysterious religious events that have been reported, many of which leave the eyewitnesses wondering if they experienced a divine encounter. Our Lady of Zaitun Referred to by believers as the Our Lady of Zaitun event, it appears that within the Zaitun district of Cairo in Egypt, there appears to have been a mass sighting of the Virgin Mary having manifested as a ghostly apparition above the church of the Virgin Mary in the city of Cairo. There have often been claims of Marian apparitions, of which are mass sightings of a manifested and ghostly image of the Virgin Mary appearing above churches from around the world. However, the event of Our Lady of Zaitun continues to be one that mystifies believers and skeptics alike. This is due to the fact of the mass witnesses, evidence and numerous apparitions seen over the course of two to three years in total. Each time the apparition manifested, witnesses claimed to see the shining image of the Virgin Mary, emanating like a pure white light, and standing as a woman on the roof of the church, looking out over the area. The first sighting occurred back on the 2nd of April, in 1968, when a Muslim bus mechanic working across the street ran to the church in the fear that he had spotted a woman about to jump from the roof. It wasn't long before the police were called, and a crowd had gathered to try to figure out what was going on. The woman then began to glow a bright, blinding white light, and the police had to restrain people and hold them back to prevent them from being trampled. As the sightings continued, more and more people began to gather around the church to also confirm what had been told, only to also bear witness to the strange apparition manifesting before them and seeming to bear the resemblance and likeness to that of the Virgin Mary. Reports claim that more than 250,000 people confirmed the sightings, with several pictures being taken of the event, showing a large, glowing apparition standing on the roof of the church. The Miracle of the Sun, also known as the Miracle of Fatima, was an event that occurred on October 13, 1917, in the small town of Fatima, Portugal. It is considered one of the most significant religious events of the 20th century, and was witnessed by thousands of people. According to the accounts of witnesses, the miracle of the sun began after three shepherd children, Lucia dos Santos and her cousins Jacinta and Francisco Marto, reported seeing a vision of the Virgin Mary on six different occasions between May and October 1917. During the final apparition, which occurred on October 13, 1917, the Virgin Mary told the children that she would perform a miracle so that all people would believe in her apparitions and messages. As the crowds of onlookers gathered around the children, a sudden heavy rainstorm began. The rain stopped abruptly and the clouds parted, revealing the sun. Witnesses reported that the sun appeared to change color and spin, moving erratically across the sky. Many people reported seeing visions, including the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ and other saints. Others reported seeing a dancing sun and some claimed to have witnessed miraculous healings. The event was witnessed by an estimated 100,000 people, including reporters and photographers. The phenomenon has been the subject of much debate and speculation, with some attributing the event to a natural atmospheric phenomenon known as a sundog, while others believe it was a genuine miracle. Regardless of the cause, the miracle of the sun had a profound impact on the Catholic Church and the people of Portugal, with many believers taking it as a sign of the Virgin Mary's approval of the Fatima apparitions and message of prayer, penance and devotion to the Rosary. The Controversial Archaeological Discovery of the Tel Dan Inscription The Tel Dan Inscription is an ancient inscription discovered in 1993 during an archaeological excavation at Tel Dan in northern Israel. It is considered one of the most important and controversial archaeological discoveries in the region. The inscription consists of fragments of a stele, or stone monument, that dates back to the 9th century BCE. The stele contains an Aramaic inscription that mentions a king of Israel named House of David. This is the first known reference to the biblical King David outside of the Bible, and thus the Tel Dan inscription has significant historical and religious importance.
The inscription mentions the victory of the king of Aram over the king of Israel and the king of the house of David, indicating that the kingdom of Israel was under threat from its neighbors. The Tel Dan inscription consists of three fragments, with the largest fragment containing 13 lines of text. The inscription is written in Aramaic, which was the language spoken in the region at the time. The text is difficult to decipher in places due to damage and missing letters, but the meaning of the inscription is generally clear. The discovery of the Tel Dan inscription has helped scholars to better understand the history of the region during the 9th century BCE, as well as the political and religious developments that were taking place at the time. The inscription provides important evidence for the existence of King David and the historical accuracy of the biblical account of his reign. Biblical archaeological discoveries are important for several reasons. Archaeological discoveries can provide evidence that supports the historical accuracy of the biblical narrative. These discoveries can help to confirm events, people and places described in the Bible and help to paint a more complete picture of life during biblical times. Archaeological discoveries can provide insight into the daily life, culture and customs of ancient civilizations, including the Israelites and other peoples described in the Bible. These discoveries can help to give us a better understanding of the people and cultures that played a role in the development of biblical stories. They help to preserve our cultural heritage and history and provide physical evidence of ancient civilizations and help us to learn from the mistakes and successes of those who came before us. For many people, biblical archaeological discoveries have spiritual significance. They help to connect people to their religious roots and provide a tangible link to the stories, places and people described in the Bible. Overall, biblical archaeological discoveries help us to better understand the history, culture and religious significance of the Bible and the peoples it describes. So, what do you make of these incredible biblical discoveries, along with the strange apparitions that have been reported to have occurred around religious artifacts? Also, what do you make of the 12 signs from Jesus? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.